Hey folks, Chris Liz here, FixCam. With Barack Obama and John McCain expected to make their vice presidential picks publicly known in the next few days, I got to thinking about who were the best and, more deliciously, the worst vice presidential picks in history. My picks follow. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Who did I leave out? Who did I put in? Joe Lieberman, that's right, the Connecticut senator back in 2001 when he was a Democrat, drove tons of excitement about Al Gore on the ticket and helped Gore win Florida because of his Jewish heritage. Dick Cheney, that's right, I know this one will be controversial, but remember, back in 2000, Dick Cheney gave George Bush a steady veteran hand and reassured people who had doubts about whether Bush was ready and up to the job of the world's most important and powerful leader. Fritz Mondale. Back in 1976, Jimmy Carter, a little-known Southern governor, picked Fritz Mondale, a well-known Washington insider, and immediately saw a bump in his polling and got elected to the White House in November. Al Gore. When Bill Clinton picked the Tennessee senator back in 1992, he reaffirmed the idea that the election was a generational choice, and Gore went on to redefine the importance of the vice presidency. Lyndon Baines Johnson in 1960. John F. Kennedy didn't really want to pick Johnson, but he knew he had no choice, and Johnson delivered the South and the presidency to John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Dan Quayle, back in 1988. Potato misspelling, the jihad against Murphy Brown, we could go on. Andrew Johnson, Abe Lincoln's vice president in 1865, came drunk to the inauguration and promptly insulted any number of politicians before being politely escorted off stage. Tom Eagleton, the senator from Missouri who was George McGovern's pick in 1972. Unfortunately for both men, the hospitalization of Eagleton for depression came out in public, forcing Eagleton to step aside and slowing any momentum McGovern might have gotten with the pick. Aaron Burr. He shot and killed Alexander Hamilton while the sitting vice president. Spiro Agnew, Richard Nixon's vice president in 1968 and again in 1972, was forced to resign from office a year later after being charged with bribery and extortion, among other criminal counts. Everybody knows, everybody knows that it's Fixes in the fixes in the fixes in